Hello, welcome to part three on graphing transformations. In this video, we're going to do vertical stretches and compressions. So we have our basic function f of x. Uh, in this case, it's going to be x squared, like all the other videos. Uh, we're going to graph the function that has the form y equals k times f of x. So some constant times your basic function. And this is going to be a vertical stretch or compression. So if k is greater than 1, we're going to stretch f of x by a factor of k. I think it's easiest just to look at an example. So let's go ahead and find x squared again. And I want to try graphing something that has the form, let's do uh, 2 times x squared. So notice that k right here, k is 2, which is definitely greater than 1. So it's going to be a vertical stretch. Uh, so let's see what that looks like. So what we're going to do is we're going to multiply every y value, or whatever you plug in for x. So let's say we plug in 1. We get 1 squared is 1. That would be the point right here. But then I'm, I'm going to immediately multiply by 2. So instead of getting the point 1, 1, I'm going to multiply that y value by 2. So now I'm going to get the point 1, 2. So now let's say we have the point 2, 4. That would be right here. All right, so when I plug in 2, you get 2 squared is 4, but then I immediately multiply by 2, so I get 8. So this is going to go from 2, 4 all the way up to 2, 8, which would go right here. Now, 0 squared times 2 is still 0, so we get that point. All right, on the other side, it, it mirrors what we just did. So instead of negative 1, 1, we're at negative 1, 2. Instead of negative 1, 4, we're at negative 1, 8. Uh, now, if you plug in 3, 3 squared would be 9. And then we'd have times 2, which is 18. So we wouldn't, we would, uh, wouldn't be high enough. Ooh, I also made a mistake. All right, negative 2, 8. So that's right there. All right, so let's connect the dots. Now, notice that uh, everything is, it looks like everything is being shifted up. Um, but notice that the shift here is bigger than the shift here, all right? And that's that's why it's not actually a vertical shift, uh, because just pretend like you're standing on a rubber band. In order to stretch something, something needs to stay fixed. That's our fixed point, in this case, the origin. So everything else gets pulled up. As you move farther away from the origin, these changes are going to be larger and larger. Um, but just imagine you're you're pulling up you know, on a rubber band, and that's really what we're doing. So let's see what happens when k is now less than 1. Now in the second part, k still has to be positive, uh, but now we're less than 1. So we're between 0 and 1, and it's going to be a compression. So we're going to compress f of x by a factor of k. So in the last example, we, shift, we, we uh, stretched up. Now imagine pushing something down towards the x-axis. So in this example, we have k, which is 1 fourth, which is less than 1, still positive. So what we're going to do is every y value we get from x squared, because again, this, this is x squared, uh, we're going to immediately divide by 4. So let's go and try what do we get when x is 0. Well, we still get 0, because a fourth times 0 is still 0. Uh, let's try what happens when we plug in 2. When we plug in 2, we would have gotten 4, but then we immediately multiply by a fourth, or, you know, divide by 4. So now we're down here at 1. So if I plug in 2, I get 1, right? 2 squared is 4 times a fourth is 1, so that's 0.1. If you did 4, like plug in y equals 4, or I'm sorry, x equals 4, you get 4 squared is 16, then divide by 4 is 4. So we're going to go... 4, 4. So notice that everything is being compressed downward towards the x-axis, but we still need a fixed point. Otherwise, it would be a shift and not a compression. Um, so we would also have the same thing over on the other side. Negative 2, you square negative 2, you get 4, but then divide by 4, you get 1. Uh, and then if you did negative 4, you get 4. So these would be all the y values. Again, we're shifting 
everything down and when you connect them you get something like this it wasn't too bad uh, so again just notice that everything is being you're pushing your graph down towards the x-axis so it's flattening things out 